This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Hey number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and today we are going to look at the sort of weapons used by the Shinobi no Mono, so the ninja, and what sort of weapons they would have used and if they would be effective against samurai armor. Now of course before starting I need to make a massive caveat, the sort of ninja that you saw at the beginning of the video but again you will be seeing during this video is of course a sort of fantasy pop culture ninja but on this video we will be talking about both the historically accurate Shinobi no Mono of feudal Japan and the sort of weapons that they might have used and also the uh, pop culture sort of ninja and so we will be talking about both. So to start off the first thing I'd like to identify is what is a ninja? The idea of a ninja being a trained assassin is a myth. Um, real ninjas were not trained assassins. A real ninja of feudal Japan would be intelligence. It would be a spy. But with that being said, it doesn't mean that a real ninja wouldn't have been asked or couldn't be asked to perform assassinations. And in fact, some real historical Shinobi no Mono could have been really good at that. So you could say that some Shinobi no Mono were excellent assassins, but that doesn't mean that every single ninja in the history of Japan would have to be an assassin. So in other words, a ninja would have to be good at doing espionage. That's what a ninja does. Some ninja would be trained in combat, other ninjas might not be. Uh, this is important to keep in mind. Now let's move to the weapons a real ninja could use and let's compare them to the sort of weapons that we are used to see that are normally attributed to the Shinobi no Mono. On my videos I really like showing the weapons that I talk about and even though I own some Japanese weapons I don't own a lot of so-called ninja weapons. So my friend Marcus is going to help us out with his collection of weapons and he's going to be our second fictional ninja for today. But the real question is, could some of these weapons that are usually attributed to the ninja by pop culture have actually been used by a real historical ninja? Well, keep watching to find out. And big thanks to my friend Marcus, link to his Instagram in the description. Now this one here is a katana, it's a 1095 high carbon steel, this is extremely hard, very very nice weapon. A real historical ninja could use a katana, but what about the ninja toe then? A ninja toe is basically a katana with a straight blade and a squared tsuba. Did these exist in ancient Japan? The answer is probably yes, and in fact we can find them in iconography, although usually they are associated to retainers, for example, Ashigaru, or maybe low-level samurai. Is the ninja to specifically a weapon used by the ninja only? No. Also because that would be a silly thought. I mean, if you use a weapon that immediately identifies you as a spy, then you can't really work as a spy, can you? I mean, people would just see the ninja to and arrest you. But as every good ninja knows, it is very difficult to bypass good security. Now, physical security is important, but also cyber security is incredibly important in this day and age. The sponsor for this video is Surfshark VPN. Now, what is a VPN? Well, a VPN is a virtual private network. All of you that watch my content obviously use the internet on a daily basis. You're always there visiting sites searching for stuff. What a VPN does, it encrypts your data to add an extra layer of security. And as you know from a recent upload from this channel, I had to learn the hard way that it's always important to have many layers of security and protection to make sure that you keep all your personal information safe. And at the same time, your browsing activity hidden because you never know what sort of muppets are lurking trying to steal your stuff and spy on you. So the way a VPN works is that it lets you place your computer or your phone anywhere in the world. So you might be in America and you might appear as if you were browsing or using a computer from the UK or from Italy. But it also allows you to access the internet as if you were from another country. And this can be very useful if you want to watch content, for example, on Netflix or other sites that wasn't available for your country or they had restriction. Perhaps you want to watch a specific TV series and a specific season that is not available. It's very useful and in my opinion, an excellent choice. Make sure those Muppets don't find you unprepared. 
Now, today I've got a special offer for you. You can use my code METATRON to get an 83% off and three months for free. Also, Surfshark has got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can just try it out, test it with absolutely no risk. Check out the links in the description and big thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring my video. So could a real historical straight bladed sword with a squared tsuba being used by a real ninja? The answer is yes, most likely. Also because you have to imagine one thing, a ninja is a profession. A samurai is a social status. They are not mutually exclusive. In fact, it's very probable that a lot of historical shinobi no mono were part of the bushi. Also, some ninja could have been retainers, such as the Ashigaru, the Lightfoot Infantry of Japan, which means, since we know that some Ashigaru did use the straight blade that it will be later on called ninja to by the, you know, modern day pop culture, then it is very believable that some ninja, if that's the weapon they had, that's the weapon they would have carried with them on missions because it wouldn't identify them as ninja, it would just identify them as retainers, which is fine. But if you were a high level samurai and you could afford a more expensive weapon, a properly made katana, you would have used this. Now what's interesting is that the sai, for example, and even the nunchaku, and also other weapons such as the tonfa, these are traditional kobudo, Okinawan kobudo weapons, so not exactly the sort of weapon that we would expect a real historical ninja to use. For a historical ninja, I don't really see the reason why a real ninja would use something like Sai. I just, I just don't see it. But for pur the purpose of this video, we are still going to look at the effectiveness of Sai against samurai armor because something like that could happen. Remember that Okinawa was con under Japanese control and therefore if you were a, a person from Okinawa and you were to, for whatever reason, you decided to uh, defend yourself from a fully armored samurai, what chances would you have? Not a very effective weapon against someone in full armor. Remember that samurai armor, like the one I'm wearing here, uh, I know it might not look it because it's fully lacquered but this is metal now in the case of my replica made by iron mountain armory it is made of cold rolled milled steel in the case of originals it could have been iron but it could have also been low carbon steel sometimes originals would have been uh, covered in leather so that's a possibility uh, but you know a lot of samurai armor would have been metal there are exceptions sometimes very low level low class samurai and ashigaru could also have paper armor so you've got and of course you can have leather armor usually scale is made of leather but you know for, if you fight a samurai wearing something similar to what i am wearing it would be full metal the Sai is an interesting weapon and I think it's a very effective weapon but we need to remember that a Sai is not meant to stab in fact usually real properly made Sai like the ones used by my friend here uh, they don't have a point they are cut and that's because they are not daggers okay they're not weapons that are supposed to cut and stab given that doesn't mean that they're not dangerous weapons. I mean, if you hit a samurai in the throat, which is where I would suggest a ninja to try and hit a samurai uh, who is in full armor, if you hit him in the throat full power, you will kill him. If you hit him in the eyes, you will blind him. If you hit full force on the torso, you could break bones, although if you try that against the armor, you're not going to do anything. So a sai can be used lethally. But generally speaking, it's not a weapon that it's meant to be lethal. It's a weapon that it's meant to incapacitate an opponent. And against someone in full armor, that's not going to be easy. The katana, even though it's not a main battlefield weapon, this is designed to kill. There's no incapacitation in here. The moment the armor enters the equation, my money's on the samurai 100% of times, unless he's a complete idiot. Because the guy with a sai, it's going to be really difficult to deal with the guy in armor, also because the guy in armor is going to attack you with his blades. What about nunchaku? It goes without say, absolutely useless against someone in armor. You could say, yeah, but it's an impact weapon, and, and I'd like to underline, real nunchaku don't have the chain, they're usually linked by cord. You could say it's a percussion weapon, so maybe if you hit the samurai on the head, it, it might still stun him, it might still go through but I know I don't think a, a nunchaku could ever uh, have the power that a medieval warhammer could have or a medieval mace could have and if you try and hit someone wearing a kabuto with a nunchaku 
it's not gonna do anything. The Tomfa, similar situation. Uh, if you're using the Tomfa against someone who is not armored, very, very, very effective weapon. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Kobudo weapons are not effective. They can be, but if you use, the, but remember, they are not weapons that were meant to be used against someone in full plate armor, and therefore, Tomfa against a fully armored samurai. Absolutely not. Tanto! Now I've got a horrible Tanto here. And this is a prop. In fact, it's one of those, you know, <laughs> I love it. I just love this. Look, it's gonna go through my armor now. Nazika! So it's horrible, but I don't have a proper tanto, so you'll have to excuse me for that. The katana was nice, but this one is not. Uh, but anyways, a tanto, the dagger. I think this is probably the best option if you're finding a samurai in full armor. And this might be strange because you're thinking, but this is this has such a low range. But the thing is that it's going to be very precise. And if you know how to use this, uh, you and you can manage to get close, so to close in against your opponent, then you can try and subdue the samurai and hit with this in the throat and in those areas, small areas, therefore you need precision, where the samurai is not covered in armor because it's always the same situation. I mean, look at my kote. You're not going to cut through this. There's no way to cut through this. And yes, I mean, if you're really precise, you could go through the silk in between this configuration, although some configurations are solid. Mine is not. It's got like these ribs. But I mean, in combat, while the opponent is moving, this is going to be, I mean, no, but if you can get this into my eyes, if you can get this into my face, then the rest of the armor becomes useless. So I'm not saying it would be easy. And finding a samurai in full armor, it's going to be a monument, I mean, run away if you can. But if you have to, if you're a shinobi no mono and you need to kill him and you didn't think he was going to wear armor, so you saw that the samurai is wearing armor for whatever reason, maybe you are in an enemy camp and you saw that he was going to bed, but he's not going to bed and he's awake and he saw you and he's charging at you and there is no way for you to get out, I would say, maybe try to close in, use your sword, but eventually drop the sword and use use this. Use the Tanto and try to subdue him, maybe even try to put him on the ground, use some Jujutsu, put him on the ground, do some disarms and, and then finish him off with a Tanto. I think this would be the best weapon to use against a fully armored samurai if you were a ninja on a mission. But since we're talking about stabbing, what about Kama and Kusarigama. But I'd like to underline first that Kusarigama is not really a historical weapon. As far as I know, nothing, no kama with a chain attached has ever been considered to be, I mean, a, an actual historical weapon. But a kama can be a weapon. Uh, again, part of uh, traditional uh, Okinawan Kobudo, but kama could be used as a tool uh, by uh, retainers and by samurai uh, in the rest of, of Japan as well. I would put kama at a higher position than I would put a Sai or I would put a Tomfa for example. And if you are skilled and you're using both then of course you can use one to defend, one to attack at the same time. Uh, you know, you could make it work against the Samurai and try to do the same things that we were trying to do with a Tanto. Personally, I would prefer a Tanto. I don't know, it's just the the fact that the Kama is really a tool that it's, it's becoming a weapon but it's not really a design that screams success for actual mortal combat. So the only scenario in which I would see a Shinobi Omono using a Kama or a couple of Kama to try and fight a Samurai in full armor would be if you are a uh, Shinobi who has infiltrated enemy territory and you are pretending to be a farmer and you're farming the land but for whatever reason someone betrayed you uh, back home and now this samurai in full armor is coming to you and he's going to kill you and you need to defend yourself and that's what you've got that's what you've got but again the odds are in favor of the fully armored samurai uh, it would be really difficult to pull that off what about a boar well any kind of um staff will give you range advantage and range, ad range advantage is always a great choice unless the samurai is coming at you with a naginata or a yari, in which case, I mean, yeah, you're screwed. And as a ninja, would I choose to you to bring with me a boar uh, if I knew that I was going to fight it? No. But in a, the only scenario in which I would see a Shinobi no Mono using a boar and trying to make the best of it against the Samurai in full armor is, again, a situation in which a Shinobi is now pretending to be a monk. You know, one of those Buddhist Zen traveling monks, you know, with the with a straw hat and I'm, you know, meditating. I am asking for money. and I'm. But in reality, I'm looking 
looking at the situation and I'm spying for my Lord. And of course, I can't really carry carry a weapon with me, meaning like I can't carry a, a katana or a ninja to or whatever, because then it's going to be obvious that I'm not a uh, a monk. And sure, I could hide a, a tanto uh, inside my clothes, but if I think that that's going to be iffy, carrying something similar to a ball, like a staff, uh, you know, pretending that it's something that I use to walk and then use it as a weapon. And that, that's the only scenario in which I could see wooden stuff, even if you smash samurai armor with full power, unless you hit him in the face, that's not going to do much. What about throwing weapons? So, kunai, shuriken. Okay, um, well, first of all, again, the uh, kunai is a real weapon, and shuriken, of course, existed, although we have to consider the fact that a lot of these throwing weapons are actually part of, even in Katori Shinto Ryu, they do train that, like shuriken jutsu and stuff like that. It's not exactly, it's not something that only the ninja used, it's something that actually a lot of bushi were training how to use. So that's the first thing we need to consider. And also we need to remember that the kunai we usually have in mind, the sort of weapon, a throwing uh, knife used by Naruto, for example, in, in anime. Uh, well, that's a sort of, it's not that it's not historical, it's that it's more of a, a more modern version of a kunai and more ancient versions of kunai uh, would be a lot longer uh, less fancy and mostly used as tools to excavate and do stuff like that and if you want to know more about this I'll leave some links in the description to videos that talk about these things in details. But whatever the case, if you're throwing a weapon and you're good at it, then yes, you could make it work. I would totally do it as a shinobi. Like if I am carrying with me uh, some kunai and I can throw them and try and hit the samurai in the face, uh, particularly if he's not wearing a mask, then def I would definitely try that. And then if I miss, uh, that could distract the samurai and it could allow me to close in, take my tanto and go for the gaps. Okay, but these are the weapons that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, if I were a ninja, I would go for Tanto, and uh, if I don't have a Tanto, then possibly even a Wakizashi might, be, might do the job. But those would be, so shortish weapon blades are what I would use, and I would try to get in close. And I think any other weapon, although yes, you can make it work if you're extremely skilled, and perhaps and lucky. Still, I don't feel uh, that uh, the other weapons that we talked about today that are traditionally uh, in pop culture attributed to the ninja, even though perhaps historical ninjas didn't exactly use all of those, uh, I don't think that they would be very good against the samurai. Just to remind you, make sure you check the link in the description below to get that special offer, 83% off. And again, big thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring my content. But if you liked this video, please remember thumbs up and if you're not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.